Hey guys, how's it going? Jam here, and welcome to another F1 2016 league race, this time from Austria. Qualified P5, here's the start, and we are... go! There we go, I may have been a little bit late on that, but the Haas behind us gets a... either gets a phenomenal start, or he might have had a bit of a jump start, or he might have had the glitch where he gets the uh, lights go out earlier than everyone else, either way. We've lost a position straight away, we're looking to go around the outside of a McLaren at Turn 1, doesn't quite work for us though, looks like our teammates got past him though, we started alongside him, who's in uh, P4, going into Turn 2, having a look up the inside of the McLaren, not really getting there, our teammate gets a bit sideways and goes into the gravel, I don't know if he spun on himself, or by himself, or if it was uh, a little bit contact with the Renault up ahead, I couldn't quite see, but we... Uh, Already got a little bit of a gap to the uh, McLaren in front of us, that we were trying, even though we were trying to overtake him just a few corners ago. He's already well out of striking distance, and the car behind us is a similar gap, to be honest. And, um, yeah, we just sort of settled into the race from there on, and had quite a quiet start to the race, until towards the end of lap 5. We've got the other McLaren right up behind us, and as we go down onto the main straight, very long straight here at Hockenheim, uh, Hockenheim? Hungary, even, um... Yeah, he's got the uh, DRS wide open. He moves to the inside, so I give him as much room as I dare. Hold my line on the outside, and uh, that will en enable me to take a nice defensive line into turn two. Although, I kind of didn't see that one coming. He pulled a lovely switchback move on me, dived to the inside as I moved across back to the racing line. And, uh, yeah, got the much faster wider line up through turn three, and he's up ahead by the time we get towards turn four. So that's another position lost with a fantastic move there from the McLaren driver. Following up now into turn oh, sec the Sector 2 now. has a little bit of a lock up through the chicane. I close in a little bit through there, but not really significant enough for me to make a move back on him. So we're going to jump now up to lap 7 towards the end of it. And uh, is he going to go into the pits this lap? Yes, he is. Are we? No, we're not. So we're going out a lap longer, at least, than the McLaren ahead of us. I had a pre-planned strategy for this race. I did a practice, and what I was trying to do was stretch out the uh, super soft tyres as long as I can. But as you saw a second ago, Jeff said this was the last lap for the pit window. So, coming round lap 8, last lap for the pit window, had a little think about it, but no, we're going to go even further. We're going to stretch these tyres onto lap 9. As I say, I pre-planned my strategy, and I wanted to stretch them as far as possible, but look at that left rear tyre, already at 70% starting the lap. Like I say, I, I did um, pre-plan my strategy, but this was a mistake, even though it was almost pre-planned. I, I should not have stretched these tyres onto lap 9, as I say, 70% on the left rear going onto the lap. I really had to nurse them around, and I lost a lot of time because I was very, very slow. Skipping out the boring pit lane section, then and there you can see the McLaren going past. We've got a decent undercut on us, and we've dropped back quite a bit. And uh, we come out side by side with the Ferrari just behind us, and he's out on super soft tyres again, which is um, an interesting strategy, to say the least. There was no rain scheduled for this race, so I stuck the middle medium tyres on and uh, tried to go long. But, of course, sticking the medium tyres on doesn't mean I'm going to be very quick. So I lost out rather quickly to the Ferrari on two compounds uh, difference. Uh, he seems to have uh, made quite a bit of progress already as we come up behind the McLaren driver now. Obviously the Ferrari managed to get past the McLaren at some point. Going into the chicane, he's had a big mistake, decides to avoid the sausage curbs. Don't blame him there. But then he carries on his bad line through this middle sector. Terrible line through the right-hander there, and I get a much better run. And I've used a very opportunistic overtake to take the position off of him. And that's us up into P7 now, which is uh, not bad, because I think a few people haven't pit yet. Up into turn 5 now, and we're closing in on the other Ferrari, who's out on soft tyres. We go to the inside, and um, he decides that we're not allowed to have any room on the apex, so uh, yeah. A bit of contact made, and uh, we've lost out back to the McLaren. Once again, and I've got no grip through the following corners with uh, the grass on my tyres. On to lap 13 now, and it has started raining. And as you can see, I've asked about the uh, tyre situation. Jeff's kindly telling us that uh, Inters won't be far away, which was rather annoying, because as I said a few minutes ago, 
there was no rain scheduled for this race as we lock up into the chicane and tap the back of the Ferrari. Check the front wing though. Unfortunately, there is no damage. It's just uh, another little bit of time loss. And I decide that the lack of grip that I'm feeling, especially through that sort of lockup, it's definitely time to come into Inters and flick it onto Inters for the next tyres on the, is it the MFD? I think, I think that's it, the multifunctional display. And decide that it's definitely this lap to come in. Flick it to the intermediate tyres and just sort of try and get back to the pits without uh, too much time loss because you know, it, when you're driving on the wrong tyres, it is very apparent as we all dive into the pit lane. No, we don't all dive into the pit lane. The, middle of that, the McLaren has decided to stay out for an extra lap. But uh, we come in behind the Ferrari, right behind the Ferrari, moving to the right-hand side just so we don't hit him under braking. And uh, now it's going to be a battle of the pit crews. As my teammate comes into the pits, unfortunately for him, he's going to end up stacking behind me, which is never a good thing. He's going to lose a little bit of a time in his pit stops. We need a good pit stop here, Manor boys. Come on. And it is a 2.3 second stop. Very good. And we've jumped the Ferrari by miles. I think the other Ferrari actually came in ahead of him. So he must have stacked behind his teammate, which has enabled us to get the jump on him. And we come out in relatively clean air. One lap later, though, we was closing up to a, Mas uh, a Williams who uh, stayed out that extra lap. Probably incorrectly. The uh, Inters were definitely the better tyre to be on at this point. And as we come down the back straight, oh, is anyone going to be exiting the pit lane? Yes, there's a McLaren. No, there isn't. Where did he go? Just thought I'd leave that in because it was rather bizarre. Uh, I think there's some sort of weird glitch where that happens. But, uh, yeah, it was <laughs> rather interesting to see a random disappearing car overtaking a uh, ghost car there. I presume he's a lap down. They normally are when you overtake them this late into the race. I'm closing up right on the back of uh, the Ferrari. Not the Ferrari that we had an incident with, but the Ferrari that came out on super soft tyres when we was out on the mediums. And he got past us on the lap that I came out. It's actually been... We've actually jumped quite a bit later into the race. I think it's about five laps or so. And we've... As with last week at uh, Silverstone, I seem to have really good pace on intermediate tyres. So uh, I think it was about five seconds or so behind him when I came out of the pits. And we gradually just sort of managed to churn away at the uh, time difference. And as you can see, we're right up behind him now, almost making contact through the penultimate corner. Looking to the inside for the last corner. But uh, it's not really an overtaking position there. So we just keep it nice and tight. A little bit of opposite look. Making sure we get good exit. Going up into rich mix. Hogging the slipstream. And it was surprisingly ineffective at this point. So presumably that would suggest that I'm running a higher aero setup than the Ferrari. Which potentially means that... Uh, or potentially a reason as to why I'm slightly better in the wet. Because you typically want a uh, higher downfall setup. I did try and get the switch back through the first corner. But uh, I didn't quite get the line right and I had to lift out of it. So I'm tucked back up behind the Ferrari for the following few corners. I think he may have got a twitch of oversteer there. Went over to the right-hand side very violently. And as we go through turn, I think it's about turn five, he goes very wide. So we dart to the left-hand side. And now I've got to try and go around the outside around this long right-hander. But I've gone too wide, really. I lost quite a bit of momentum, and he's still there on my inside, going into the very tight chicane now, and we're still alongside. I managed to get my nose in for the second part, but I get a worse run, and I'm going to have to concede the position at the next corner. How we managed to get too wide through that chicane without making contact, I don't know. Through the next three corners, and he's run wide, wide onto the grass. Very bizarre place to run onto the grass there. So I don't know if he was looking over to see where I was rather than looking where he was going. But once again, though, through that section, I was stuck on the outside trying to make it work while he had the inside line. So even though he made a mistake, I couldn't quite benefit from it. And, one, and then again, through the, that right-hander, I was on the right-hand side, and on, on the outside line, and couldn't make it work. And going through the last few corners now, not quite as close as I was a few laps ago. Or I might have... Was it, it might have been last lap, I can't even remember. But uh, yeah, I'm far too far back at this point to make anything work in the slipstream. So we're going to jump on to lap 22 now, just a lap or so later. And once again, I've closed up massively through turn 5, although I have run wide and managed to get myself a warning. I get a very good exit from up the hill, though. And we're going up the inside. He's got a bit of twitch of oversteer. He's had another bit of twitch of oversteer. I think I had a bit of twitch of oversteer. And uh, unfortunately, there was quite a bit of contact. I spun into the wall, and as you can see, I've lost half of my front wing. And I've done a 360. Jeff's immediately on the radio wanting me to come into the pits. I've seen my teammate behind me, though, and I don't want to hold him up through this very downforce-dependent section. So I've let him go, and now it's just a case of 
I need to get back to the pit as quickly as possible. While I accepted uh, Jeff's strategy change, I did decide that I thought I could get soft tyres to the end of the race if I pit for the dries on this lap, whereas the uh, strategy that Jeff wanted me to do uh, meant coming in for the medium tyres, which are more durable, but I thought uh, the uh, softs would last long enough and that should give me an extra bit of pace as well. Unfortunately, as we do come into the pits at the end of this lap, it seems to be this is the changeover point in general anyway. So uh, my teammates come in ahead of me, so we're going to stack behind him. And I thought it was quite unusual, really, because if I hadn't had that incident with the Ferrari, and uh, speaking of the Ferrari, there he is coming out the pits ahead of us already, I think I would have stayed out on Inters for an extra lap. I don't think I would have pit at this point, but uh, obviously the Ferrari decided that he would, and so did my teammate, and now... We sat here for a seriously painful amount of time, just completely stationary. We lost one position there. I think that's to uh, one of the McLarens. And we're still waiting for the nose to go on. There we go. And then we lose another position there to the uh, Force India. And then we've got the other Ferrari behind us as well. So we've lost out a huge amount of time. Obviously, we was fighting with the Ferrari. We lost out to my teammate. We lost out to McLaren. And we've lost out to the uh, Force India in front of us going to cut now on to the end of lap 24. I think it's taken us about a lap or so to uh, catch up to the uh, Force India driver. In the DRS range, we'll say we haven't really caught up yet at all. He goes very defensive, very aggressively defensive as uh, to, to, in order to break the slipstream. But as you can see there, he is on the medium tyres, as I said, when it came to coming in for the strategy call. It seems as though a lot of the guys that I'm racing against in, the, in the close proximity, my teammate, the other Ferrari, the McLaren, that Force India, I think they're all on the medium compound of tyres. So as I go up the inside there and take the position off the Force India, it would be apparent that uh, I have got a lot more pace. And as we jump onto lap 33 now, we've closed up to the McLaren that we also lost out to during my uh, very long stationary pit stop. So, and as you ca can we see, are we quite close enough to see what tyres he's on? I think you can just about see there, yeah, he is also on the white walled medium tyres. And we're only two laps away from the end now, after I got past the uh, Force India. It was quite a, quite a long, boring section, really. I was just trying to put the laps in and close up to this McLaren, which we have done with just uh, two laps and a few corners to the end of the race. But yeah, I've, I was, I'm pretty happy with my strategy post-rain, or post the after the rain section. Because, as you can see, like uh, there's only two laps to go, and my tyres are still working fine. I'm in the DRS zone. I'm going to go and look up the inside. I managed to break a little bit later, by the looks of things. But uh, the McLaren holding the outside line well, very nearly making contact there. Flicking it back up into Rich Mix. He looks like he's going defensive back onto the racing line. I look at having a look back, moving over to the inside. Almost having a look at trying to replicate the move he made on me very early on in the race. I do believe this is the same McLaren that overtook me in the very first stint. And uh, we're very close behind him now on the penultimate lap. And you can see they're flicking it down into lean mix as we come through this middle sector. As I say, I think my tyres are still fine. I haven't actually looked at the the um, tyre wear screen on the MFD yet. I don't know if I do at all in this race, but I still feel like I've got a grip advantage over the mediums. So it was definitely the right call to come onto these yellow striped tyres. But my reasoning for going down onto lean mix was to save as much fuel as possible at this point. I felt with the grip advantage through the middle sector, I could still manage to keep up with the McLaren on the medium tyres. And now as we go into the final sector of the penultimate lap, flick it back up into rich mix, and we've got quite a bit more fuel to spare. So we can now close right back up as we enter the uh, final corner, get a nice decent exit, in the DRS with that extra rich mix that we've managed to save and we are gonna fly past the McLaren like he's not even there almost like it's real life and he's got that terrible Honda engine but we get the position made or get the move made and get the position well before turn one really and as we go down towards turn two with the DRS still open as it's a double DRS zone we have got the position uh, nice and well, fairly easily using the rest of the rich mix throughout the lap to make sure that he can't come back at us. And it was indeed a successful uh, final lap. Very quiet lap, just making sure he couldn't come back at us. Uh, the car ahead now is uh, just a ghosted car. He's, he wouldn't have been fighting for position anyway, but that is it. We crossed the line in seventh position. So here are the final standings for the Hungarian Grand Prix. 
I started 5th and finished 7th, and uh, my teammate started 4th and finished 6th. We both dropped two positions, but uh, given everything that happened in the race, I think that went, went, went quite well for our mana team. Uh, obviously, I had that incident where I lost my front wing and had a very long pit stop, and uh, I believe my teammate had a drive-through penalty as well for speeding in the pit lane. The uh, Haas that finished 4th did very well as well. Uh, managing to do one less pit stop, although I think that was him that had the, I don't know if it was a jump start or whatever at the, at the beginning of the race. So he definitely benefited from that. But that is it for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.